Hi, welcome to ESI 412, Nanotechnology, Materials, Infrastructure, and Safety. I'm Professor Uk Jun Nam at the Pennsylvania State University. So here is the outline. Uh, I'll give you some uh, overview of the uh, scanning probe microscope. And these are the three uh, most famous uh, microscopy out of the uh, scanning probe microscopy. So I'll talk about the atomic force microscopy and then scanning tunneling microscopy and then near field scanning optical microscopy and then uh, we'll talk about some other kind of one uh, scanning probe microscopy and then uh, is their application. So um, the scanning probe microscopy is kind of a very uh, broad term of um, technique. So under the uh, big umbrella of the scanning mic probe microscope, we have an atomic force microscopy, and then scanning tunneling microscopy, and then um, near field scanning optical microscopy, and then uh, this is the uh, uh, MFM is an uh, magnetic force microscopy and then uh, we can use this kind of technology for lithotherapy and some uh, mechanical uh, analysis of a material. And then uh, these are the, some of the techniques under the uh, scanning under the technique of the scanning probe microscopy and then there are uh, some other uh, very very variant uh, available as well. So uh, this is the uh, movie that I will show you. It will just show uh, will give you some brief introduction about how what is the uh, scanning microscope and then how it works. refers to a group of imaging techniques that collect images of a sample surface by moving a probe over that surface in a raster pattern. As the sample moves, the probe records the height of the surface. Scanning tunneling microscopy was the first scanning probe technique developed by Binning and Royer in 1982. Atomic force microscopy is the most commonly used scanning probe technique. Capping mode microscopy, magnetic force microscopy, electric force microscopy, frictional force microscopy, and near-field optical microscopy are a few examples of the long list of scanning probe techniques in use today. Scanning probe microscopy refers to a group of all scanning probe techniques have a small probe, a feedback method, and fine control of the distance between the tip and the sample surface. Various methods are used to send a signal to the feedback. The feedback control assesses the distance between the tip and the sample. If the distance is too small, the feedback loop signals the piezo crystal mounted at the base of the sample to contract, lowering the sample. If the distance is too large, the feedback loop signals the piezo crystal to expand, raising the sample. An image of the sample is created by plotting its horizontal and vertical movements as the tip scans across its surface. An image of the feedback signal is also produced. This indicates how well the feedback loop is controlling the tip sample interaction. So as you can see, uh, those kind of uh, uh, scanning is kind of an X and Y, and then the stage also moved uh, G direction, so we can achieve this kind of a uh, three-dimensional uh, images after uh, this uh, scanning. So. Let's talk about uh, the atomic force uh, microscopy. Um, among the uh, all the other kind of a scanning probe microscopy, why atomic microscopy is the most popular? Um, actually, uh, these um, techniques uh, can um, 
analyze uh, conducting materials and then insulating materials. So unlike those kind of electron beam microscopy, it does not have any charging effect or those kind of uh, effects. So that is why it does not matter uh, if that uh, analyzing material is on a conductor or insulator. And then the AFM is very simple since it does not require any vacuum. And then uh, we'll talk about those kind of three modes uh, the AFM can offer, and each of the modes can offer is kind of a different kind of a benefit. So uh, the basic is on, uh, there is an uh, cantilever, and then uh, we use the electron beam, and then here is a photo detector. And then based on these three components, uh, we do have a, a piezo crystal underneath. So all using this kind of all component, uh, we are uh, analyzing those kind of topography using the uh, AFM. So these are three modes uh, we can choose uh, for the AFM. That is um, contact mode, and then non-contact mode, and then tapping mode. So these operation mode are uh, coming from uh, this kind of atomic distance versus forces. So as you know, as these two atoms are getting uh, close, first it's just uh, pulling each other. So just to, first it has an uh, attractive force. And at some point, when these kind of two atoms, this distance is kind of too close, uh, it, these two atoms started to uh, push each other. So that is an um, repulsive force. So uh, when we use a contact mode, uh, we are using uh, this uh, distance versus force area. And then uh, for the non-contact mode, uh, we are using uh, this um, distance versus force mode. So as you can see, for the contact mode, uh, with a very small distance change, the force change is kind of uh, uh, very high. But uh, for the non-contact mode, as the distance change the same amount, the force change is kind of a very small compared to, to the contact, uh, contact mode. So uh, just to briefly say, uh, the contact mode uh, offers a better uh, image resolution. And then uh, the tapping mode, it is in between, uh, between contact mode and then uh, non-contact mode. So uh, the distance between uh, the probe tip and then the material surface is uh, in this kind of a range. So let's talk about the contact mode. So those kind of piezo crystal can uh, positions underneath of the stages and depends on the uh, different kind of a tool. It can also positioning the upper side of the head, uh, which is attached to the uh, cantilever tip. So this contact mode is simply uh, monitoring uh, the deflection of the cantilever. So it just keep monitoring how much uh, those kind of uh, uh, position of the laser beam is uh, shifted from the center. So uh, it is just simply uh, monitoring the deflection of the cantilever. So uh, when we have uh, uh, some kind of a bumps, uh, this kind of a cantilever just to um, bend upward. So it just to shift uh, its uh, position of the laser uh, beam. This is a photo detector, a little bit upward. And then uh, this uh, empty circle is the center uh, of those kind of uh, uh, feedback loop want to maintain. So when uh, the cantilever just bended like this, and then the uh, spot of the laser uh, beam just shifted something like this, those kind of a feedback loop are uh, just record, uh, it is kind of a plus. And then when it is kind of a bending down, something like this, 
In, in the case of that, uh, since those kind of laser spot was kind of shifted to the down, so the machine just thinking about this is a negative uh, topography. So uh, here is an, another kind of a cartoon showing uh, how those um, AFM is working. Scanning probe atomic force microscopy uses a silicon nitride tip mounted on the end of a silicon cantilever spring. Feedback is based on a change in force between the tip and the sample, which changes the angle of the cantilever and moves the spring. A laser reflecting off of the back of the tip moves up and down on a detour as the spring moves. The feedback loop reacts to a change in laser position by adjusting the height of the sample in order to keep the force constant. The topography image is created from the path of the sample moving up and down while the deflection image is based on the deflection of the tip. The AFM operator adjusts the feedback controls to minimize the deflection of the tip, increasing the accuracy of the topographic image. Tapping mode is used to... So, uh, for the contact mode, uh, it is kind of a simply uh, those kind of a cantilever just to move uh, physically uh, the surface of the sample and then the laser beam is just to uh, keep monitoring those kind of a bending of the uh, cantilever. So that is why it is kind of a very simple uh, operation. So uh, this contact mode has an advantage like an, um, it's a, uh, scan speed is kind of a, a relatively uh, high. This is the highest scan speed among those kind of a three modes because it just simply uh, the cantilever is kind of simply moving around the surface of the sample and then uh, we are just monitoring the shift of the laser beam. And then since uh, this uh, cantilever just contacting the samples, it offers the highest resolution among the three uh, modes. So uh, it can uh, offer atomic resolution. And then um, when we have a very kind of a rough uh, kind of a topography, actually this uh, method might be the proper method to analyze uh, this kind of a sudden change of the topography. The disadvantage is that uh, we are uh, putting a kind of a high force vertically and then we also move these tips laterally. So when our samples made out of very uh, soft materials like um, biological samples or polymers, um, those kind of uh, samples can be destroyed uh, during the analysis. And then uh, since this kind of a vertical force uh, versus with uh, this kind of a lateral force, uh, just to distort the images and then uh, it's kind of a lateral resolution uh, can be uh, lower than uh, the other by this kind of a distorted features. So tapping mode is a little bit different from uh, those kind of uh, uh, contact mode. So tapping mode is an, um, it using an AC signals. So uh, this kind of a uh, cantilever just to uh, keep oscillating so it has an, uh, this kind of an uh, oscillation peak. And as this kind of a cantilever uh, getting closer to the uh, uh, surface of the sample, uh, those kind of interaction between the cantilever and then the surface of the sample, just to change it, the interaction of those kind of two uh, cantilever and then the sample, just to change the uh, magnitude of this kind of oscillation. And then this feedback group monitoring uh, those kind of amplitude uh, change. So it just basically uh, monitoring uh, this kind of amplitude change. So as those we have uh, some kind of a lower point, those kind of amplitude change is kind of getting bigger. And then uh, as the tip move around to this kind of a high point, those kind of amplitude, uh, oscillation amplitude is getting smaller. So uh, by monitoring this kind of amplitude change, uh, we can um, we can draw, we can mapping uh, those kind of uh, surface topography.
So uh, this is an another um, demonstration cartoons for tapping mode. Scanning probe microscopy refers to a group of Im tapping mode is used to image soft samples that could be damaged by the nanonewtons of force that are present in atomic force microscopy. As the name implies, the tip oscillates as the sample is scanned. The amplitude of the oscillation is used as the feedback signal. Tapping mode is used to image soft samples that could be damaged by the nanonewtons of force that are present in atomic force microscopy. As the name implies, the tip oscillates as the sample is scanned. The amplitude of the oscillation is used as the feedback signal. Tapping mode is used to image soft samples that could be damaged by the nanonewtons of force that are present in atomic force microscopy. As the name implies, the tip oscillates as the sample is scanned. The amplitude of the oscillation is used as the feedback signal. Tapping mode is used to image soft samples that could be damaged by the nanonewtons of force that are present in atomic force microscopy. As the name implies, the tip oscillates as the sample is scanned. The amplitude of the oscillation is used as the feedback signal. Tapping mode is used to image soft samples that could be damaged by the nanonewtons of force that are present in atomic force microscopy. As the name implies, the tip oscillates as the sample is scanned. The amplitude of the oscillation is used as the feedback signal. Tapping mode is used to image soft samples that could be damaged by the nanonewtons of force that are present in atomic force microscopy. As the name implies, the tip... So, um, as you saw, uh, the tapping mode uh, touched the uh, surface of the samples time to time, but not always, as those uh, contact mode did. So, um, this tapping mode also uh, apply uh, also um, provide a uh, very high resolution as high as uh, contact mode and then um, since it is not contact the sample all the time so uh, it just to cause less damage to the uh, soft samples and then uh, it does not uh, it just cause kind of a much less uh, damage on the uh, on the sample surface and then uh, the disadvantage is that uh, we are just monitoring the oscillation amplitude of those kind of a cantilever beam. So uh, those kind of a monitoring of those kind of a, uh, amplitude is less straightforward than that of the contact mode. So that is why the scan speed is kind of a slightly slower than uh, that of the contact mode. The non-contact mode is kind of a similar to the um, um, tapping mode, but it has a much uh, bigger gap between the uh, cantilever and then uh, surface. So uh, it has an older uh, advantage uh, tapping mode has, but um, and then uh, since it never touches the surface of the sample, so uh, it does not damage anything on the uh, surface, but uh, as the distance between the uh, tip and then a uh, surface of the sample is kind of uh, getting uh, further, uh, the resolution is kind of uh, getting uh, lower, and then uh, this is the uh, slowest uh, scan speed. And then uh, if there is a, a kind of a moisture uh, uh, present on the surface of the uh, sample, uh, in this mode, this kind of a uh, cantilevers can be stuck by this kind of a moisture and that's on another kind of a disadvantage uh, this contact mode uh, can have. So uh, let's talk about the configuration of the AFM. So this is the uh, typical configuration of the AFM. So we do have a laser and then we do have a meter, two meters and then here is the uh, cantilever beam and then a uh, piezo scanner, and then a uh, feedback loop, and then photo detector. And then uh, here is the sample stages. And uh, this is the one of the example of the uh, uh, AFM um, tool. So it has an optical microscope. So using this optical microscope, uh, we know uh, that lasers well aligned on the backside of the uh, cantilever. So uh, this is the laser, and then uh, using one meter here, we just uh, adjust uh, this laser, just to spot the center of the cantilever, 
and then using another uh, meter located over here, we can just uh, uh, adjust uh, those kind of uh, reflected laser. This is the meter two. This is the meter one. Just pointing the center of the uh, photo detector. So using these two meters, uh, we just uh, are putting those kind of alignment of the laser beams on cantilever and then uh, photo detector. And then uh, it is kind of a little bit different from system to system, but uh, those kind of cantilever tips is mounted on a, a ceramic chip uh, for this specific system. And this is a side view of the cantilever, so it looks like something like this. And then it has a uh, bulk portion. And then uh, it has a very long road structures, and then very end there is a, a very sharp tips are present. So uh, we, as we saw here in this kind of a specific um, systems, just mount uh, this probe uh, onto a ceramic chips, and then uh, this ceramic chips kind of uh, mounted to the uh, cartridges. And then uh, finally, it can just mount it something like this. And then uh, for this specific uh, example, uh, we load, uh, we use a metal disc uh, to load the sample. And then uh, there is uh, some kind of adhesives, kind of uh, uh, copper tapes, and then we can just load the samples on that uh, metal disc. And then uh, we can positioning uh, that samples uh, like this. And then uh, there is a piezo uh, tube scanner. So as you saw from the cartoon, uh, we can just uh, allow um, those kind of AF game can rest or X and Y. And depends on the signal from the feedback loop, it can adjust the stage uh, to the G direction. And then uh, in this specific uh, example, that scanner is located on the bottom. So uh, let's talk about the image processing. Uh, so uh, there are a bunch of different kind of tips are available from uh, silicon nitride tip and silicon tip, and even there is a uh, carbon nanotube tips. So all these different kind of tips has a different kind of uh, uh, mechanical strength, kind of. Uh, and then uh, it also has a different kind of a diameter of the tips. So uh, silicon tip is kind of a, a normally sharper than silicon nitride tip. So when we use an, a very sharp tip, in case of we have a certain uh, nanoparticles, we can just trace very well about its kind of a morphology. So we can just easily uh, measure the diameter of the nanoparticle. If the um, tip is kind of a too uh, not sharp enough compared with the uh, sample we want to analyze, instead of we have uh, this kind of a profile, the resulting profile is something like this. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, sharpness of the tip is the one of the factor to have a good uh, high resolution of the images. Uh, one good advantage is, and this advantage is um, as we are uh, using contact mode, uh, which offers the highest resolution, depends on your uh, tip materials and then your uh, samples. Uh, as you just keep uh, kind of uh, analyzing, mapping your samples, uh, this uh, tip area can be uh, worn out and then uh, as, as you continue that analysis, this kind of a sharp point uh, can be uh, dull. So in the case of that, uh, your uh, first, as you just keep repeating, depends on how uh, this material is kind of removed by those kind of friction. Uh, those kind of first images can be different from several kind of scannings later. So that's a one of the uh, consideration we might think about. Thinking about. 
Another reason, when we have a very sharp uh, trenches with a vertical side wall, uh, we cannot have this kind of uh, uh, exact profile because of this kind of uh, um, diameter of the tip. So as we have a sharper tip, uh, we have a much closer uh, depth profile, but we never be able to get this kind of a 90 degree uh, of the uh, uh, depth profile. So uh, in the uh, worst case scenario, if your trench is kind of uh, this much small, and then if your uh, tip is this much broad, your resulting result as it just scanned these directions, the profile will be something like this. So it does not deflect or further full depth of the trenches uh, and that's the uh, because of the limitation of this kind of a physical limitation of the uh, tip dimension, tip diameter. And uh, contamination is another kind of a uh, concern. So uh, since we operate uh, this AFM at the um, atmosphere in most of the cases in a regular room, so. Um, your samples can be uh, kind of uh, contaminated by the particles. In the case of that, uh, these cantilever tips can easily pick up those kind of uh, particles. And then once those kind of a uh, sharp tip is contaminated by this kind of a uh, uh, contaminant, if then uh, we cannot have the uh, right uh, profile, right measurement of, of the samples. So that's the another kind of a concerns using this uh, AFM. So uh, let's talk about the scanning tunneling, tunneling microscopy. So uh, this, uh, typic, this is a typical configuration of the uh, scanning tunneling microscopy. So for this specific example, those kind of piezo tube scanner is located on top not under the uh, stage. So it's simply using those kind of a tunneling current between your samples and a uh, probe tip. So um, let's see uh, that um, cartoon one more time. I think that might be much easier to understand about what is going on? A scanning probe like microscope refers to a group of inductive metal tip that collects images across sampling surface and angstrom by moving a probe over that surface in a raster pattern. As the same from a conductive surface, an electrical a scanning tunneling microscope consists of a conductive metal tip positioned approximately 10 angstroms from a conductive surface, an electrical potential of 10 to 40 millivolts is placed between the tip and the sample. This creates a conductor, insulator, conductor structure with an insulator thickness of 10 angstroms. Quantum mechanics predicts that a small number of electrons will tunnel through a short barrier. The number of electrons, or the tunneling current, is related to the barrier thickness. When the barrier thickness is less than 10 angstroms, the number of tunneling electrons increases, strengthening the tunneling current. When the barrier thickness is greater than 10 angstroms, the number of tunneling electrons decreases, weakening the tunneling current. A constant current STM image is created by scanning the STM tip over the surface while keeping the tunneling current, and therefore the tip sample distance, constant. The tunneling current is monitored by a feedback loop. The feedback keeps the tunneling current constant by raising and lowering the sample stage, which in turn keeps the distance between the tip and the sample constant at 10 angstroms. The topography image is a plot of the movement of the sample up and down under the tip, while the current image results from plotting the actual tunneling current. Atomic force microscopy uses a silicon nitride tip mounted on the end. So uh, basically uh, that scanning tunneling microscopy is monitoring, either monitoring the uh, tunneling current or keeping the uh, tunneling current the same and then monitoring uh, the position of the um, cantilever. 
So uh, this scanning tunneling microscopy is normally operated in a very high vacuum environment. And then um, feedback is controlled by the tunneling current. And then uh, the tunneling current changes exponentially as those kind of uh, uh, distance uh, between the samples and the TVs kind of uh, change it. So this is the one of the example of the um, STM analysis. So what you are seeing right now is a uh, silicon surface. So uh, one good thing is um, if we try to do uh, this kind of analysis using the AFM, uh, one potential problem is uh, this kind of a silicon can be easily oxidized. So instead of having this kind of a nice atomic uh, structures of the silicon, we may uh, analyze uh, silicon dioxide. But uh, since the STM is operated in a very high vacuum, so uh, we can minimize this kind of oxidation. And then uh, this is an another example of the uh, platinum. So uh, since it just to uh, apply, uh, just provide those kind of atomic uh, resolution uh, with a good um, good resolution, so you can easily find this kind of a defect point defect easily by uh, this uh, analysis. So uh, this uh, STM method is good for the uh, analyzing those kind of uh, atomic uh, scale um, topography uh, analysis, but also it can be used for uh, manipulating um, atoms. And then uh, the following video shows the example of the uh, manipulation of this kind of uh, atoms using STM. So in this movie, uh, each of the uh, dot represent uh, one atom, and then um, the next video will show you how uh, we can uh, kind of manipulate each of the single uh, atom. In a significant move forward, in the march toward creating electronic circuits that are thousands of times smaller than today's most advanced technology, IBM is announcing a milestone in the ability to manipulate and understand matter at the atomic level. Scientists at IBM's Ahmedin Research Center in San Jose, California have, for the first time, demonstrated the ability to measure exactly how much force is needed to move individual atoms. Knowing the different forces required to move different atoms will allow IBM's nano-constructionists to figure out which materials should be used for building devices from the atom up. For example, a so-called sticky atom would be used for something that you don't want to move, like a base that you want to keep in one place, 
Well, a so-called slippery atom would be used when you want to build something like an on-off switch that needs to move with ease. 10 or 20 years ago, nobody could imagine that we would have today laptops, cell phones, and iPods. I think it's impossible to speculate what nanoelectronics will bring us in 10 or 20 years, but I'm sure it will change our world even more than, than the iPods we have today. The force is measured via tiny changes in the frequency of a small quartz tuning fork. This exploration of the realm of atomic scale structures and devices stands to impact the future direction of information technology. This is Jeff Gluck reporting. So using this kind of a manipulation of uh, single atoms, uh, in addition to making uh, this kind of a uh, movie, Actually, we can uh, use this kind of technology to making some devices. At IBM, we are interested to understand how the magnetic properties evolve from the individual atom to something that might be useful for technology, for data storage. We as an industry have been following for many years this trend that we now call Moore's Law, where we exponentially shrink the components down by a small factor every year. Now what we are allowed to do in this laboratory here is we're allowed to jump to the ultimate end and start with single atoms and build structures one atom at a time. In this breakthrough, what we have done is we have stored magnetic information in only 12 atoms. We have this specialized tool that allows us to investigate the properties of single atoms and small clusters of these atoms. And now for the first time, we've actually seen that these 12 atoms behave like a stable magnetic unit. So a current computer hard drive, for example, stores information in a large number of magnetic atoms. And all these magnetic atoms act together to make one bit of magnetic information. And so if we can scale down, then we correspondingly get an, a much larger density or much larger number of bits in our disk drive or in our computer. Here you see a representation of a single magnetic bit consisting of 12 atoms that we built with a scanning tunneling microscope on this surface. The tip of the scanning tunneling microscope can also be used to switch the magnetic information on this bit from a 0 to a 1 or from a 1 to a 0. Now we're zooming out from the single bit to 8 bits, which makes one byte, which is the, which is the next bigger unit of information in a computer. A byte, for example, can store all the characters that you have in the alphabet and all the numbers that go. If we zoom out further, then you can see that we can put many of these bytes next to each other. In this example here, we have five of those, and they store different information in them. In this case, the letters T, H, I, N, K. In this size comparison to existing technology, you can appreciate how much smaller this atomic scale magnetic data storage could be, and how much more information you could store in the same space on your drive. So this is actually a testament to IBM's investment in R&D. IBM did not become a 100-year-old company by doing the same thing over and over again. They're constantly innovating. And in fact, there is so much encouragement to innovate. And this has become a place where the innovation engine is very, very vibrant. And what you're seeing here today is one of many outcomes from our investment in research, long-term investment in research. So, uh, this uh, scanning probe microscope is kind of a pretty powerful tools, kind of a, not only uh, making the images, but also uh, manipulating uh, these kind of uh, uh, atoms. But the problem is that uh, this is, uh, STM only works uh, uh, conducting materials. So, the uh, probe should be a conductor, and then the sample also should be a conductor. And then uh, this operation of this technology uh, is operated in a very high uh, vacuum environment. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the uh, near field uh, surface optical microscopy. So, um, for the AFM, uh, we utilize the uh, atomic force uh, between the tips and then samples. And then for the STM, uh, we monitored the electric current between the tip and uh, samples. For this ensemble, uh, we are using light. So, just thinking about the optical uh, microscopy, 
uh, this kind of a resolution is about the best uh, optical microscopy offers around 250 nanometer resolution. And that's all because of the diffraction limit of light. But uh, using Ansem, uh, we can increase the uh, resolution. So uh, we can achieve roughly around 50 nanometer um, resolution of the images. And then uh, for one example, using the um, 488 nanometer uh, wavelength of the uh, laser, uh, a research group just demonstrated that they can uh, increase the uh, resolution up to 25 nanometer. So this is a typical configuration of the uh, NSAM. So it has a uh, laser source and then it is kind of uh, connected with uh, uh, this kind of optical fiber. And then uh, this optical fiber is kind of uh, the end of the optical fiber is kind of pretty sharp. And then uh, here is the sample stages. And then uh, this one also has um, uh, this kind of uh, uh, piezo scanner. And then it has um, uh, lenses and then uh, photo detectors uh, positions underneath of this kind of um, uh, optics. So you can just uh, finally uh, make the image of those kind of optical um, microscopy image. So uh, in this head, uh, it has an, uh, this kind of a tuning fork. So this tuning fork uh, can um, work for an, uh, kind of a fine adjustment of this uh, spacing uh, between the um, tip and then sample. So uh, this distance, as, as, as the distance between the tip and the sample is close, uh, we have uh, uh, better images. So. Uh, this tuning fork uh, can uh, adjust those kind of uh, uh, particle direction uh, pretty precisely. And then uh, since it's the uh, optical cable, this kind of uh, light source coming through here, and then just to apply it to the sample. And then as to the uh, scanning wise, uh, using this kind of a piezo scanner, uh, it also uh, works very similarly to the uh, the other uh, SPM. So uh, there are two types of uh, tips. One is an uh, this is the uh, transparent tip, but uh, the outer side is kind of a coated by uh, metal. In this example, aluminum is kind of a coated uh, those kind of uh, outside of the tip. And then uh, another type of the tip is an, uh, it does not have this kind of a metal coating outside. So as you can see, uh, this metal coated tip uh, is kind of a point is kind of a little bit dull compared with non-metal coated tip. So uh, depends on what kind of a tip uh, people I use. Um, there are two different kind of an uh, on operation mode. So one is an aperture mode using this tip, and the other one is an aperture list tip using uh, this kind of a tip. So uh, this is the uh, one of the operation mode uh, using uh, those kind of uh, um, aperture um, metal coated. Uh, tip. So uh, in this case of that, when the sample is kind of a transparent, we apply light and then just detect uh, the images from the bottom. Or you can do that a uh, reverse way. And uh, if this is not transparent, uh, we just uh, apply the light and then uh, collect the reflection. Or um, we can just uh, do a uh, outside of the detectors and then collecting the signals like this or apply the light from the outside and then collect the image from the inside of the tip. Uh, using this kind of a tip has a lot of problems like an, um, it has a heating problem and then contrast problem, sensitivity and then since the tip is kind of a not sharp enough so uh, um, is kind of a topography or those kind of a measurement uh, issues, but still, um, 
this type of the tip is kind of much more preferred because uh, this sharp uh, non-metal coated tip is kind of very hard to uh, control uh, those kind of a measurement result. So uh, for this kind of a tip uh, without uh, metal coatings, it can just apply the light uh, from the bottom and then it can just collect through the tip or uh, some other way uh, you can just do, uh, do the image analysis. So this is the one of the example of the high resolution uh, optical images. So this is the same sample analyzed by the uh, SEM. So uh, when we analyzed this one uh, using the AFM, I don't know why that uh, resolution is kind of uh, this poor, but uh, using the ANSOM, uh, which is um, uh, smaller than uh, 100 nanometer, so this is an um, this is a one micrometer in scale, so um, it's kind of one uh, about about 50 nanometers and then about two micrometer in size, I think. So um, using the ANSOM, uh, we can uh, make the image out of this kind of a feature size about. Uh, about this kind of a uh, feature size pretty well. So uh, using the ANSOM, uh, like an STM, uh, this ANSOM can be used for uh, the other kind of application. So the first application is on uh, achieving a high resolution optical imaging, uh, as I showed you in the uh, previous um, slide. And then uh, putting a Raman spectroscopy, uh, we can also do the uh, Raman spectroscopy uh, using this ANSOM. And then uh, using this one, we can use this one as a uh, phototherapy. And then uh, if we are using an um, optomagnetic materials, uh, we can uh, to recording some of the data on those kind of materials. And then if we are using very high energy laser uh, just to uh, pass it through that optical fiber, we can also use it for the laser ablation. So using this as, uh, ANSOM, like an STM, uh, we can uh, also use uh, for uh, uh, many different kind of an application as well. So uh, what other kind of application, uh, other kind of a variant of the SPM uh, technology can offer? Uh, one of the technology is an uh, dependent therapy. So uh, the technology itself is an, uh, very similar to uh, writing, a, writing on a paper using a fountain pen. So this AFMT works as an uh, pen and then uh, there is an, uh, some ink materials can applied through the tip. So if this ink has an, uh, this kind of uh, uh, molecules which can uh, self-assemble on some substrate, uh, we can just directly write the patterns as we want. So uh, this dependent therapy is one of the technology uh, of the direct writing, like the uh, E beam or ion beam therapy offer. And then uh, some other thing is, and uh, I will not go through uh, much of the details about all of these things, but. Um, it can just, uh, using uh, those kind of electric field, it can just etch away some materials. And then uh, it can also deposit some materials, like using the uh, electric field. And then uh, this last one is kind of a pretty uh, interesting uh, techniques. So it can just, uh, using the contact mode, uh, using the very special um, tips, uh, which tip is uh, made of uh, diamond, diamond-coded tips. 
So it's kind of a, a surface of the tip is kind of very uh, mechanically very strong. So uh, using this kind of a tips, uh, we can just scratch some of the metal deposited films. So using that way, uh, we can check the adhesion of a film deposited on a substrate. Another thing is uh, instead of just uh, scratching the uh, surface using uh, this AFM tip, we can just uh, uh, push vertically to the uh, material. So using that way, uh, this is the top view. So we will have uh, this kind of uh, uh, square mark after we uh, push uh, these tips into the uh, substrate. So uh, using this kind of uh, nano indentation, as we just uh, um, push your stress to the uh, substrate, we can observe how uh, these kind of uh, materials are uh, cracked or how these kind of materials are respond to this kind of uh, um, indentation. So that's the one of the uh, example we can use for the uh, using this kind of SPM. Another variant uh, of the SPM is, and as we just discussed in the earlier of the slide, that is a magnetic force uh, microscopy. So in this case of that, if the surface of the material is kind of uh, having some materials distributed like magnetic materials are uh, distributed like the uh, hard disk drive. If we are using this kind of a, a magnetic force microscopy, uh, we can uh, imaging this kind of uh, uh, materials much better. So uh, today we talked about uh, scanning probe microscope, microscopy, and then uh, these three uh, micro techniques, AFM and STM and ANSOM. And then we also talked about all those kind of uh, other kind of a variant of the SPM. So um, we talked about those kind of uh, manufacturing techniques and then characterization techniques uh, by uh, this lecture 20. And then from next, next lecture, we're going to talk about the uh, actual um, application in nanotechnology and uh, its fabrication uh, technology as well. Thank you.